likely people that God uses. Let's talk about that. Right, he's the one. Yeah. About a million years, I would not be sitting in this seat in Vermont. Well, in the picture. Good morning, beautiful people. It is, what is it? 6.30. On Tuesday morning. Oh, Tuesday. <laughs> in February. I don't know where January went. Yeah. Like, February. Am I in that picture? No, you're not in the picture. Why is it high? Hi. Okay, bye. Um, so unlikely people that God uses. I told you, Frankie Sawicki. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Katie. Sawicki. Okay. Um, so just think of some of the people over history, over time. Um, even uh, kings who didn't believe in God, God used, like King Cyrus. And the cool thing about King Cyrus is that um, even history proves that he was used to do that. Um, so we can look at archaeology and historical books and know that Cyrus did what he did. Also, uh, if you look at um, the king that uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got thrown in the fire, um, archaeology proves that uh, uh, proved that right. Um, and he praised God, but didn't become a Jew. Um, and over and over again, uh, Pharaoh, um, Judas, <laughs> um, and then you look at Paul, which uh, Saul became Paul. Saul was a murderous person going after the church, going after all the Christians, throwing them in jail, killing them, and then he turns and most unlikely character for an apostle. So you just keep having these people over and over again. Then you get to Matthew and Luke and you see uh, the lineage of Jesus and you start looking back and you're like, whoa, uh, unlikely people that the lineage of Jesus came through. And one of them that stands out to me all the time, which is really cool, not only because she's a woman, but because she was kind of promiscuous, uh, but was um, was converted, um, and is if God didn't use her, Jesus wouldn't come through that lineage. And so Rahab uh, comes up multiple times in the lineage of Jesus, and we first introduced in Joshua, uh, chapter 2, verse 15, actually chapter 2, the whole chapter 2, um, she was in Jericho, and um, she saved the Israelites from being caught by the king because they were spying and seeing what their enemy, enemy had. So these two spies went into um, Jericho, and um, Rahab hid them on top of a roof and uh, told the, the people who were searching that they weren't there. Obviously, she wasn't a Jew yet, and she just, you know, were, was protecting them. And then she went to the roof and said, look, since I protected you, uh, save me <laughs> when you come and destroy. Because we know that you're going to come destroy. We know um, that uh, God is with you and we're kind of against God. And so save us. And so Joshua chapter 2 verse 15 says this. Then since Rahab's house was built into the town wall, which is just like really cool. Like you have this huge wall and the house was built inside of the wall. But anyway. She let them down by a rope through the window. And so she saved these two Israelites from being caught and captured and killed. And they said, On, upon our life, if you put this red scarf outside your window, uh, when we come in to destroy, we'll leave your house and your family alone. And they were good to their word. And so Rahab uh, became a Jew, and uh, through her lineage, Jesus came. And so, unlikely unsung hero, a uh, heroine, um, Rahab. And I think that's awesome that God uses, no matter what your background is, no matter what uh, things in your life uh, you that you've done, God can use it for helping others and helping in the glory of his kingdom. And so, um, I think that's just a really cool story about her being in the lineage of Jesus. So... God can use anybody. So my encouragement is, think about yourself. God can use your background, your history, your, everything that you have gone through for the glory of his kingdom and to help others. I love you. Jesus loves you too. You have a great Tuesday. Bye-bye now. That was fast.